Today in the morning we talked about the biology of Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia and how much the biology has now affected both prognosis as well as treatment options. And that's very critical because now we know that MYD88 mutation is present in 90% of the patients with Waldenstrom. And that is so critical because it affects not only your prognosis of the patients but it also affects the treatment options that we offer for our patients. The other mutation that's very critical is CXCR4 mutation. And again, that's present in 30% of the patients and when we have both CXCR4 mutation and MYD88, that may again affect whether we use ibrutinib therapy or not in those patients. The other part that we talked about today, which was very critical, is 20% of our patients have familial Waldenstrom. And a year ago, we started looking at what are some of those germline mutations and germline sequencing that leads to potentially patients having familial disease. Again, it's very early in the discovery mode, but again, it's part of that idea of can we potentially screen patients for MGUS and uh, smoldering Waldenstrom? <clears throat> And can we be in the future predicting who will develop Waldenstrom or not? And can we prevent it from happening in those patients? And then finally, what I talked about is as we treat our patients with multiple therapies, whether it's proteasome inhibitors, alkylators, rituxin, ibrutinib, we will have resistance and clonal evolution. So the question is, which mutations lead to that clonal progression? And we found in one of the studies that we presented in ASH last year, that CXCR4 mutations increase significantly as we have progression post-therapy. So again, monitoring patients for clonal evolution during progression is very critical.